All right, call the meeting order 732. No public participation. Do we want to wait to approve the minutes, I guess? Yeah. Um, so yeah, this meeting is just to discuss what our next steps are for climate action plan and climate leaders. Um, so we had a call last week with um, Aaron Kokinda and Ann Waite from the town. Because um, Ann was going to have her intern put together um, all, from all the different plans that we have, anything that references climate or any goals or anything related to that. She kind of did it, didn't really. <laughs> Um, she kind of just tried to get like a starting point for the for the climate plan, like goals for the climate plan. But it, she didn't really it didn't seem like she really gathered stuff from other plans. So, anyways, um, basically, yeah, we talked to them about you know what what we want to do, and so we came to the conclusion that for the municipal uh, operations, that's all covered under Green Communities or the Climate Leaders Program, which one of the uh, criteria for the climate leaders is to do the decarbonization roadmap, which the MAPC has a uh, technical assistance grant coming out for, which will pay for that, that whole decarbonization roadmap work. So that'll be on the municipal side for the residential and commercial. Um, we, I think we decided that ESC, like this subcommittee would kind of work on that piece, you know, also trying to get together all the information from, from the plans that we already have, look at other cities plans and kind of put it all together um, to have that residential commercial piece. And then once we have the decarbonization roadmap for the municipal piece, we can kind of put those two pieces together and have a climate action plan. <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> Maybe we... Sense? Hold on. Oh, Sharon. So. Maybe we can... I mean, we have a list of climate plans that you that you found, Melissa, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe yeah, the I next step you guys that that spreadsheet that um. Yeah, I posted. Called. I posted a bunch of samples to the directory as well, so we can. You've got the links to a bunch more than that, even. So we've got samples. Like if we, yeah. I mean, we literally could take one and change the name of the town to Wakefield, and we'd probably you know, pick the one that's the length that we think it needs to be, and then. In the right sub areas, and then just change the words. I mean, it. A lot of them will be fairly. They're not going to be completely formulaic or anything. I'm joking a bit, but I, I think the idea here is that you know the content's going to be fairly consistent depending, you know. Um, length. Yeah, or... I think we should pick towns that are kind of our size. Yeah. Right. I think um, we should think about like what's special in our town that we probably need to spend a little more brain power on like our lake or you know having a vocational school and there's probably two or three other things so a lot of that's going to fall under municipal, municipal. light plant that stuff's going to fall under municipal and municipal light plant right is another thing so yeah. i think we kind of lean into those things but i i think you're right Stefan. like i don't think that the, this is a reinventing the wheel there's only so many ways to come up with a climate plan yeah, yeah. so that's what i was going to say is like maybe like maybe if we could all commit to like picking two of those and kind of going through them. And then maybe we have like a working session the next and next month and really kind of throw everything up on the screen and roll up yeah. our sleeves and try to figure out like what we like and what we, what we keep and what we discard. And, and, you know, at the same time in parallel, we'll be running the climate leader stuff. Um, but I say we just start rolling up our sleeves and doing it. Yeah. I agree. And again, I think what we had talked about and just to, you know, the theory here is that the resources that would come from getting 
uh, grants that would become available to us as the climate leader town would far outweigh just filing a climate action plan. We would get a, there's an impetus then to finish the climate action plan because you need it for the climate leaders. And then back to, um, uh, then we could use that grant money if we needed to, to, if we needed a sustainability manager or something like that for the town, we would be able to get some kind of funding, right? So just tying all the pieces back, it, you know, that's not over. Right. I guess the only thing that I'm just just wondering is like, if it's that easy, you know, what's the like, you know, putting together a document that has no teeth, <laughs> so to speak, like if we create a document and all it does is sit somewhere, right? We still have that extra work that goes into getting the, the implementation. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the part that I'd be more so, you know, socializing it after the fact and trying to get buy in that we were actually going to implement said plan would be the harder part. right? Well, and, and that's a really good point. I mean, what we what we put together is really just a very first step. Like then we need to go out and we need to talk yeah. about it at, you know, town day and, and maybe have a forum or two on it. Um, like we will definitely yeah. and I think we can overlap with um the outreach committee on some of that. But yeah, I don't think that I don't think that we want to say we have a climate action plan that the town or, you know, whoever yeah. is following until we have definitely done some of that outreach. But I think I think you know, it's always a chicken and egg, right? Like you don't want to go to you don't want to go to outreach with a blank slate. Yeah. So Great. I think we I think we go through these plans and we pick and choose kind yeah. of what we like and what we think will work here. Yeah. And we put them in all in one document. And then that's when we start, you know, we can we can test some of it when when we're um tabling at places around town and, and then hold maybe more robust. I would I think we should take it to the students and have them look at it. Um, you know, maybe take it to the chamber. Like maybe we 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 need to come up with a whole outreach plan. But first we have to like have the points out there that we think will work. Okay. Couldn't agree with you more. So I'm just catching a little, uh, catching up a little bit. So, are we moving forward first with the climate action plan, or are we moving? We're going to do it in parallel. Climate leaders. We're going to do it in parallel. So we're going to parallel gonna do climate leaders, mm -hmm. and the town's going to help us with that. And we think we can get a technical assistance grant from the state to do the climate leader portion. And then what we kind of agreed was, is that this committee, you know, and working with the town and we can expand it beyond this committee, but we'll kind of work on the residential and business. I guess I think of a climate plan as kind of a three prong stool, right? Municipal, business and residential. And we'll go through existing plans and try to pull out what works for us from a business and residential standpoint. Okay. Yeah, so um, at the next ESC meeting, which is this Thursday, I have on the on the agenda to vote on moving forward with the Climate Leaders Program. So I was going to show just the, the DOER uh, presentation that was given last fall about the program, because that's, uh, I guess, the most up-to-date information they have right now. Um, so then we can vote on moving forward with that. Are there any deadlines? So the technical assistance grant application should be coming out like any time. And <laughs> excuse me, I told Dylan, you know, we we're interested and, in, you know, I'm, he sends an email to all the green communities about all this stuff. So should be getting an email about it. Okay. And he said it, it's not gonna require a lot of writing to apply for the grant and I'm assuming we may need Anne to apply for it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then it'll be my goal, like hopefully that will come out. We'll start working towards that. We'll be working towards this. And then it would be my goal to go to the town council in April for Earth Month okay. and try to get the commitment that we need under climate leaders to try to be net zero by 2050. So are you gonna go to them with the climate leaders or the climate action plan? 
I think we'll go to them with kind of how we're thinking about climate. And it won't be, again, it won't be a fully baked because we've got a lot of outreach to do and stuff. But but if we could at least have like the outline and the pieces that we think work for our town and from other communities, I think that's good. And then hopefully we'll have made some progress with the climate leaders through the technical assistance grant. That do we need town real... council approval for climate leaders? We need a declaration that the town is committed to climate action. It's one of those six. And I don't know whether there's actual language oh. drafted anywhere. Melissa, is your question, do we need town like permission or approval to apply for yeah. climate yeah. leaders? Yeah. To take that step to apply? Right. Yes. I think we'll need it to apply. I don't think we need it to apply for the technical assistance. I mean, uh, maybe that apply is not the right word, but do we need town approval to move forward with climate leaders program? I am not sure about that. Do we need it for green communities? We needed it to apply to become a green community. We did not need it to go into the process to become a green community. Okay. And I think it's similar. Okay. So we can start the process and then once we get all the criteria done, then we get their approval. Right. Okay. I mean, we did inform them that we were going into the process as, as kind of a courtesy. It was really before we had ESC. Well, I guess we had ESC. I think we'll, you know, I think we'll say that the environmental sustainability committee would like to pursue, pursue trying to become a, a climate leader and that we are going to go through the process and we will come back to them when we have met all the criteria, which includes, frankly, them making a climate statement as the executive body in town. So when, if we can get that sooner than rather than later, that'd be awesome. But no, yeah. I mean, the town goes out for technical assistance grants on things all the time that don't come to the town council. Yeah. I mean, the other part of the criteria is the uh, the EV first uh, vehicle right. policy. Yeah, so there will be certain things that have to come in front of the town council that are prerequisites to the full application for the full application. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, can, I can show you what we did for green communities. It worked actually really well we we had kind of a timeline slide that we just kept updating let's see if i can find it i think you know if we get that technical assistance grant for the decarbonization roadmap we'll also have to work on this ev first vehicle policy right in the same at the same time Why would we need to do that at the same time? It's got to be part of the, it's one of the requirements. It's all part of the criteria. Yeah, criteria. But you can't do them in sequence. You have to do them simultaneously. I mean, we can, but like we have a, the, the time limit is if, so what was it we want? There was a July or an October. Yeah, I think it was time. June or October. I would yeah, say so like, October. <laughs> right. So there's two filing deadlines this year. And so the idea was we would do our best to try to meet mm -hmm. We're not gonna. We're probably not gonna meet the first one, but we're gonna do our best to try to meet the second one. And yeah. then if we can't, the fallback is the following year in June or something. But so we don't want to. If we can hit the October one, we want to. We're gonna have to do it in parallel. Right. And that assumes. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to bring up to the town to get approved. But, um, but I mean, do we? Some of the ones things we need a sample on. My guess is that one's not hard in terms of like. You know, or we could look at. You said there's an existing policy. Yeah. Uh, for for vehicle or. Uh, I think it's a low emissions policy. Yeah, so if we would just take that, and then look at another town's version of that, and then. Sorry if this is very like, tactical or obvious to you guys. Still, something I haven't figured, <laughs> quite figured out in this space. You want to do this with computers? I could tell you all day long, but with. You know, <laughs> no, no problem. We're all document. trying to it's figure out job. this whole thing, yeah. like the process, I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, just, I think, 
I don't think it's a lot to, again, it's not a lot to get a policy drafted. It's probably going to be a lot more to get it approved given the number of touch points and timelines right. that we yeah. have. So that emissions, low emissions policy, who did that? The town council. Well, there, there was online, the DOER had a um, template that we okay. just adopted. Oh, maybe okay. they have a template for this. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a little newer, but I think, um, I'm hoping they're going to have templates for a lot of this for the climate, okay. you know, climate commitment. And they may not have developed them yet, but I think they will. And that was really key because, remember, we were very late to the Green Communities game. So a lot of this stuff had been already worked out. So we were able to replicate things from other communities. Okay. But I think we should be able to um, work with the DOER to come up with something. Maybe chat GPT can be our friend as well. <laughs> yes. I've, I've used Let's take advantage I've, of those robots. Yeah. You've used it for what? Minor stuff. I, I usually use it when I need like, like an exposition on uh like uh, definitions of terms for like i'm trying to put together an organization on data for my company and so I'm, tell me about all of these things so i generate all that content so i don't have to write it from memory or look it up yeah stop using that brain but <laughs> use it for the important parts I'm just not, not for the let me look up some definitions so yeah. but thing here I, you could probably i mean i can imagine a uh engineering a prompt that's like tell me in the form of a town of wakefield document mm -hmm. policy document what an ev policy would look like i'm sure we could get something generated but anyway i mean I, i'm sure there's other municipalities that have one already yeah, and I think they've, I mean, the important thing with the vehicles is that there are, there are carve outs for different kinds of vehicles. And and I think DOER probably has that promulgated in their, in their rules. And we'll lean heavily on DOER for that. Yeah. I can't find the original um, Green Communities. I will find it at some point. But we should kind of, you yeah, know, it's like, it's, it was like a five- five slide that kind of had everything we needed to do. And then we literally checked them off as we did them. And we had a timeline for getting them done because some had to go to town meetings, some had to go to town council. It was really, it was really good. It was very, it was linear, but it was also simultaneous because you're right. You could work on multiple things at once and then we could check them off until we got to all five and then we applied. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the only difficult part would be if we, so we're trying to get all this climate leader stuff done, but then we're also trying to do the climate action plan <laughs> at the same time for the other piece of the puzzle. So I don't know, seems like. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna be a little tricky. We may need a bigger committee. Yeah. Um, but I think the important thing is to hit the climate leader deadlines. Those are, those are the real hard and fast deadlines. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there's a, a mass i just quickly googled there's a mass version of this vehicle acquisition policy right out of the gate so i mean there's definitely gonna be easy to get some at least some language that i don't think will be too hard yeah and then we send it to our local town yeah council counselor lawyer and yeah. he kind of makes sure that sure that it fits in with our mm -hmm. our bylaws and all our language and then that needs to be approved by town council and then that needs, yeah, that's yeah. a policy. So that goes to town council. I don't think there's anything we're going to need for, where's where's the list of we, what we have to do for climate leaders? Let's... Oh, I have it up. You have it? Can you pull it up? Yeah. Because I can kind of put this in the minutes too, and then we have a start. So climate leaders. So number one is establish a local committee. We already have that. So ESC, I think we can check that box. I think the second one is that commitment we need from town council. Right. And we need to see if there's any draft language on that. Um, 
and then the decarbonization roadmap, which we'll hopefully get a grant for, and then the EV policy, and then we already got the specialized code. EV. Yep. And I just uploaded that to the drive. Okay. So there's at least one in there. Specialized code. So yeah, I mean, we've got number one and number five checked off. Yep. Um, yeah, so we need to, I really think like maybe late March, early April, like I will start to kind of socialize this with town council. I think we already have started. Melissa, yeah. you've been there. I've been talking about it. Yeah. Um, I think that when there's technical assistance on available to do it, that will help. That and if there's no match needed for that, which is great. Um, that should be able to move it forward. And then I think it's I think it's actually really to me, I think it's compelling that we don't want to just work on the municipal, we also want to kind of give some tools to businesses and a residential as well. Now, clearly those will not be mandates. We're not going to mandate certain things, but we will give, you know, I'm, I see it as a very like interactive kind of dynamic toolkit that probably will continue to change as technologies change. But, you know, like the whole things, a lot of the things we're already doing, the stuff in the schools, right? That's mm -hmm. all part of a decarbonization plan. So, this might be obvious, but um, the decarbonization roadmap with the goals, um, if we don't meet those goals, are there penalties or or is it that we just can't apply for grants? Or As I recall the... from the presentation I saw, maybe it's here. Yeah, there'll be recertification every three years. Mm -hmm. So unlike green communities mm -hmm. where kind of once you're in, you're in, I, I, I'm sure you're not as competitive for grants, but you never get kicked out. Um, this climate leaders is a recertification. So we would have to demonstrate progress. Mm -hmm. But I mean, are we, so we lose the, what's the worst thing that could happen? We lose our status. We use our climate, climate leader. Status. Yeah. It's a reputational hit. Yeah, it's and not. We um, lose the grant money that comes. And we lose it. the grant money, but is there any kind of penalty? No. Ah. Um, we're not meeting. You know. There's no like I don't know, meeting say, our goals. There's no like monetary penalty. If that's what you're asking. Yeah. So your 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 question then is if. If we get accepted as a climate leader, mm -hmm. what are the maintenance obligations, really? Yeah, and yeah, and what are the? Um, I don't want to say. I mean, the word penalty, not necessarily financial, but what are the? What's the downside if we don't maintain? Because I think people will want to know not just the benefits, but you know, what is, what, yeah, what I mean, is that? I, I think that's a fair question. I, I think we, you know, if we, for some reason, we're not able to meet our, you know, if we didn't maintain our first vehicle policy or, or we, um, you know, didn't meet some of the decarbonization first, I think they would really work with us and it would have to, you know, I think we'd in good faith, try to get things back on track, but if we didn't, yeah. we would just lose our status. You know, not unlike kind of losing your status, like we're a housing trust community or some of these other things that we opt into. If you can't maintain, then you just get out. Okay. Yeah, and, um, I would like to get some more information about this municipal decarbonization commitment. Like what does that actually mean? What we can demonstrate there. So that could help us, you know, when you're going to go to the town council in April. Yeah, maybe you can ask um, Dylan. Yeah. If there's any language around that yet. Well, I, I asked him if there was an updated presentation. Um, the other towns that adopted or are 
climate leaders program? Do they have to, do they have a report or? No, they re a climate leader yet. This is a new program. Oh, it's brand new. Not there's yeah. there are none. There are nobody. There's nobody. The first time oh, why did I think that? It. Why did We're I? So think cutting edge, Sharon. That. <laughs> oh, I thought I saw a um something on LinkedIn. Doer was like, and maybe they were in. Maybe they were promoting it. No, you know what? It, I think it was um climate leaders, but they were businesses that were climate leaders, not, um, oh, not communities. Yeah. Maybe it was it something different. Yeah. Yeah. So the first time that anybody can apply for this, this is coming June and then the second time in October. Okay. Yeah. There's a mass save climate leaders, um, Sharon. Oh, maybe that was it. Okay. That may be what it is. I thought that's what it, okay. Yeah, you're right. Mass Save Climate Leaders. Yeah. They announced some. Yeah. Yeah. They just got a, announced 2003. Like a month ago. And you're right. They're businesses. Okay. Shaw's is one. See, we should find out who the climate leaders in our town are. You're always poo-pooing them. Shaw's? <laughs> I know. Well, they've been tough on the bag thing, but. I actually love Shaw's. Um, okay, so so Thursday, um, kind of go through. Maybe we just show this slide. We need to show. Um, maybe we can go through both of these slides. So. You know, as an early adopter, we're going to help shape. Oh, here we go. These details criteria. Conversation commitment. Here's the details. Climate action plan. I don't know if we need to do all of these things. Affirmation. I think so. I, yeah, affirmation. And we're the chief. The council is the chief executive officer. That we mean that we are committed to the goals. We should look up that coalition climate mitigation commitment. Yeah, but so that means we have to do all these things. I don't think it's, I don't know if we have to do all of them. Let's look and see what Melrose and some of these others have done. Conversation Priority one, what is BE? Battery. Oh, battery. I don't even know what these are. Is that a hydrogen EV? Most fuel efficient internal combustion of vehicles that run on alternative fuels. Oh, in accordance with the green community's fuel efficient policy. So I think that, that that's what we've adopted. And that has carve outs for police and fire and like big DPW vehicles. Oh. Uh, so, but is this the policy and we just have to adopt it or? Uh huh. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's a super heavy lift over what the green communities was. Again, it's, it's, it's a lot like we've been saying, right? It's just being in the room to be able to ask the questions so that we consider them. Oh, so here, yeah, I like this chart. It says community must implement one community engagement activity for first recertification cycle. Okay. Um, community engagement, so that's the middle one. See, so we could even, this equity, like kind of finalizing the plan can be one of our engagement plans. So we can get working on it. So even if we don't finish it until our first year, our first cycle. That's true. So this is a requirement, the climate action plan. No, no this is for recertification. 
So you have to do one of these things in the middle to get recertified. Mm. But I mean, the other slide it had a bullet point for a climate action plan. This one? Yeah. yeah. I think this is if there is a climate action plan that's been adopted by your town that has a decarbonization commitment, that counts. Oh, I see. But I think we could equally do a resolution or some sort of an affirmation. Okay. Yeah. That's how I that's how okay. I interpret this. Got it. <sighs> it's been a long day. I hear you. <laughs> But I think I think this is good. I think that we're moving forward. I don't know whether we want to kind of we're a small group, and I know that Sharon, you're going to take on a lot of the MLD stuff, which is going to be an important part of this. But I mean, maybe we could pick like if somebody could look at like two plans. We could come back next month and start to kind of literally put some things on paper. Yeah, well, I'll, know, I'll go through that list that I found. And, okay. and try to pick out the towns that I think we should take a look at their plans and then basically assign everybody to look at two. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm meeting with the youth council tomorrow. I could ask for volunteers there too, if you wanted. We have new student liaisons. And we have student liaisons. Like, I think this is a, this is, look through these climate plans could be kind of, that could be a good design. a good project for them. Yeah, you know, and if we could keep next week's next month's meeting kind of you know to an hour, I, I always feel like they're overwhelmed because they have so much school stuff. But like, they yeah. could kind of put their ideas down and present them, and then we can. So anyway, let's think about using the students. Yeah, as well. Okay. Good idea. I know it was it was actually a student help, help form this ESC committee. She, yeah. you know, she kind of went through, she went, she, and I'm still looking for it. She went through all of the plans that have been done in Wakefield and kind of presented them to the town council the day that they did the vote and why they should vote for this. So, and, you know, and the whole, our whole plastic bag was done by students. Yeah. So I'm a 10th grader. So let's try to engage them. Okay. All right. Um, do we want to approve the minutes from last meeting? Oh, yeah. You need me to pull them up? It was very Did everybody look at them? Yeah. All right. Motion to approve. So moved. Aye. Everybody approved? Yes. Yes. Great. Yes. Minutes approved. Um, okay, so so I'll look at the, all those uh, the list of plans. Pick out um, how many do we want? Eight, because we have two each. Plus we have students. Yeah. Okay, and uh, and maybe and you know I was just gonna say I mean definitely some of the plans, but like I know MAPC has a zero. There might be some that are outside of actual towns or cities too. There any like I mean I, I don't want to overcomplicate this for you but like criteria like population plus or minus ten percent something like that I mean I don't just minor <laughs> is that something that's easy for you to look at or something you'd want some extra another round to or do you just want to pick the three that look the best I think I would just stay really far away from big big cities that have lots of staff well, I just don't obviously know. I think we should probably go with towns not cities right yeah. And yeah, all the town is probably good. I mean, it's probably some bigger or smaller, but for the most part, um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of like what are there things that are going to result in something looking a lot different than us? And it's probably going to be their, you know, incorporation and their, um, just the size. It's not, and I would say not too rural. I mean, I don't think like far Western Mass is not going to be, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, now yeah. Start. I mean, first, I'll look at the municipal light plan communities that's a good point oh that's great yeah. start with there start, start with that list and then yep. 
Yeah. That's a really good point. Great. Okay. Awesome. All right. So I'll put that list together and send it out to everybody so we can, um, do we want to have all that stuff kind of put together for our next meeting to go over? I think it's worth just kind of putting a Google sheet up and starting to write down ideas. Yeah. yeah. I think that's great. Uh, okay. However, for when is our next? Yeah, let's look at our next meeting. Yeah, because uh, that helps me prioritize my life. We uh, we didn't set like a schedule for the subcommittee. Do you want to set a schedule? A standing meeting? Like meet on the third Thursday or something like that. That would give us another one in uh, a week, right? Or two weeks, week in a week. Because this is the second Thursday, second Tuesday, first, second Thursday for the other meeting. And then next week would be the third Thursday. So we could meet again next week if that's, or would you want to wait for March? Well, I think we should have time for everybody to, to work on getting okay. all the stuff together from the other plans. And then you know, everybody can put all that information in a Google Doc from the plans that they're looking at. And then the next meeting, we can go through it. OK. Um, so do we want to move on? So we're the second Thursday, right? Our regular meeting is the second Thursday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to meet, have a standing meeting twice a month? Is that the goal? Well, I think that's maybe too much. I think once a month. <laughs> yeah. How about the, does the first Thursday of the month work the week before our regular standing meeting? Yeah, that would be a good one. Because I feel like then we can report out. Yeah, so March 7th. Whoops, that works for me. Yeah, I think that's good because we get enough time to get the work done and then we have it just before we meet with everybody else. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So the um, just to recap, the work is to review. Um, each of us are going to review two plans. Yeah, I'll send out the list of whittled down number of plans to look at. And, um, then, and then people can pick, or I can assign people whatever you guys want to do, two plans to look at. Yeah, then we're not looking at the same plans, I guess. Yeah, do you want me to assign people two plans? Does that work? Sure, just assign. Just assign. assign. Yeah. All right. Me. Give me short ones. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Round robin it. Make it fair. It's fine. And then the Google Doc is just to write down ideas about the different. Well, to strip out the information we may want to use from each plan. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like if if a town, another town has a really good write up on the local lake for their town, and that would be good for us, then that's what we want to do is take, okay, or that will at least take the structure. We don't, we can replace the content, but just making sure we have all the parts. Then I guess we'll figure out the EV policy thing next time. Yeah, and then we probably should just make notes of any unique items other than you know yeah. items that are unique to our town other than the lake and yep. a lake vote yeah i can start a google doc that lists you know we can start dropping in the unique attributes of our town do you know to kind of start off that google doc and then underneath that people can put in all the climate plans yep. mm -hmm. that would be good thanks yeah just remember, we can't deliberate on that Google Doc. So just add your stuff and we'll talk about it later if you have any comments on it. We add, we can't add comments to the doc. You can add things to the doc. You just can't like, you just can't leave a note saying, Sharon, I disagree with this. 
Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So just oh. put just put stuff into the doc, and then we'll talk about it in the meeting. All right. Because people can't hear it, right? And it's got to be right. You just can't deliver it, even has even to be available to the town. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. All right, we got a plan. Awesome. A plan for a plan. A plan for a plan. This is good. Melissa, you have been yeah. a good leader on this. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All thank right. you. All right, Sharon, I'll see you at MLD tomorrow. Talk yes. Oh, fun. Fun. I'm glad you told me I forgot about it, so I'm really glad you Oh. But I will it's definitely gonna, be there. It's going to be exciting. Because <laughs> we're going to okay. actually talk about some of the um, goals from our strategy session. Oh, you're right. Okay. And we're probably gonna assign them. All right, I'm cool. excited. All right, I will be there. Okay. Right. Thanks everybody. All right. Have a good evening, guys.